Welcome everybody, my name is Eruption Feng and this is Volume 6, Episode 3, titled The Lost Fable. So we hear the fairy tale of the girl in the tower. Yes, it is a fairy tale, so much of one that it was amongst Pyrrha's favorites. There's the tale of the two brothers, the shallow sea, the girl in the tower. What about the story of the seasons? So much like a young Rapunzel locked at the top of a tower, Salem seeks only for freedom. Fortunately, a legendary warrior by the name of Ozma came to conquer the tower's challenges and in the process ends up rescuing Salem from her room. The two then fall in love with one another, but unfortunately, Ozma would succumb to a sickness and die by its hand. Grieving his death, Salem sought the help of the God of Light, hoping he would bring Ozma back. He refuses, stating that it would bring imbalance to the world, and so she turns to the god of darkness who willingly complies. But because of Salem's continuous attempts to revive Ozma, the light god shows up, leading to the brothers getting into a fight only to learn of Salem's deception. So as a punishment, they kill Ozma and curse Salem with immortality in hopes that she learns the importance of life and death. Then, and only then, she may die. Salem, realizing the gods were fallible, comes up with a plan to turn the people against them. She goes from kingdom to kingdom gathering an army and so they confront the gods and make an attempt to kill them. Not pleased with what had transpired, the gods wipe all of humanity away, leaving only Salem as the lone survivor. The gods then leave the world, shattering the moon in the process. Seeking death, Salem turns to the pools of Grimm to perhaps take her life. It cannot and only creates a being of infinite life with the desire for pure destruction. So we cut to Ozma in the ether. The God of Light turns to him with a deal. He wants to return Ozma back to the world of the living to redeem it. Gifting the world relics of knowledge, choice, creation, and destruction, the Light God hopes humanity will live in harmony. This is Ozma's task. Until the world achieves harmony, Ozma shall reincarnate in the body of a host. Upon learning that Salem is still alive, Ozma jumps at the opportunity to return to life, and so a deal is struck. Here's the thing about this. Ozpin described his reincarnation as a curse. This curse was bestowed upon me by the gods, because I failed to stop Salem in the past. Now, that wasn't hard to believe, infinite reincarnation until Salem is stopped, not hard to believe at all. But this story once again showed how much of a liar Ozpin is. First, the curse. It's not a curse. What was done to Salem was a curse. She had no say in it, she didn't want it, but the gods cursed her anyway. Ozma struck a deal. The rules and stipulations were laid out right in front of him, described what would happen and how it would happen and what he needed to do, and he agreed to the terms. That is not a curse. But here's the thing. I don't blame Ozma, and I'll get into this after we get through the rest of the episode, but for now, I don't blame Ozma for agreeing to the deal. But let's continue with the episode. So after reincarnating into the body of a man, Ozma finds himself in a seemingly whole new world, one filled with faunus, no gods, and no magic. He searches for the witch, who is in fact Salem, and the two lovers reunite. So now they're back together, Salem determines that without gods, the world needs guidance, and the two can be those gods. They form a kingdom as well as a family. But Ozma feels as though things are getting too out of hand without Salem's knowledge of the gods' plans, and so he informs her of everything. Unfortunately, Salem's dark side ends up spooking Ozma so much that he attempts to take the kids and run, resulting in his death and quite possibly their kids. But I'll get into them here soon. Ozma then spends many a lifetimes doing whatever he wants, learning from them. He eventually attains the Relic of Knowledge and asks his three questions. Where are the relics? What do they do? And how does he kill Salem? To which Jin says that he can't. Okay. That is the extremely spark-noted version of the episode, but finally, let's discuss everything. First, Ozpin is good, right? He's been the good guy all along. Can't I see that now that he's always been the good guy? Incorrect. You see, it would have just made things very simple for me if you were just blatantly evil. But that's not what happened here. In this flashback, you see how incredible of a good guy Ozma is. Incredible soldier, fought for all the right reasons. The Light God said, I think you can help guide humanity to harmony. And Ozma nobly thought that he could help. You cannot fault him for thinking that he could possibly redeem, whatever that means, humanity. It's a big task, but he was up to it. But here's the thing that's going right over everyone's heads. It's not the past version of Ozma that I've been saying how shady and misguided he is. 
It's the present one. Like I said, it's not bad that he thought that he could help humanity, but it's the current Ozpin who lied about the whole thing. His goal is not to stop Salem, it's to bring peace. His contract does not revolve around Salem's existence. Peace can be achieved with Salem still being alive. He wasn't cursed for failing to stop her in the past, so why does he lie about it? World peace is like the easiest motive to have and explain to people. And here's the thing about that, Salem isn't even that big of a problem for Ozpin's goal. Maybe at one point in the past when she was seeking to be known as a god, yes, she is a problem to the world. But for whatever reason, Salem doesn't seek that anymore. Stories of her and Ozpin as gods became legend and eventually became fairy tales. The world has forgotten about Salem. If the goal is world peace, the Faunus have been oppressed literally since the beginning of their species and yet Ozpin still thinks that Salem is the number one problem. It's still uncertain, but by the looks of it, Salem doesn't even control the Grimm. They've existed before her, and it just seems like she's one with the Grimm. The Grimm are creations of darkness, and to put it in Bane's terms, she's merely adopted the darkness. I get why Ozpin thinks that Salem is a huge threat. We know exactly what his motive is. Once the world has achieved harmony, the gods can be summoned and quote unquote save everyone. Ozpin does not want Salem to get the relics because Ozpin knows the world will fail the test and be destroyed, so that's why he doesn't want Salem to attain the relics. It literally is the destruction of the world because Ozpin has no faith that humanity has any sort of peace. Understandable why he feels as though Salem is such a huge threat. It even explains the purpose of the schools. They're solely meant to protect the relics and ensure that Salem doesn't get them. But once again, why lie? The purpose of the school is to defend the relics, not to fight Salem. Not even necessarily to fight the Grimm, but to ensure the relics are safe. In this episode, we learned which relic was which. We know the relic of knowledge is a lamp, the relic of creation is a staff, the relic of destruction is a sword, and the relic of choice is a crown. But these are not protected when they're not defended. Beacon fell, and they're looking for the relic. It's counterintuitive to the whole design of the academies. The students aren't defending the relic, and so they leave the school when it's under attack. Now, you can argue that the more people that know of these relics, the more dangerous that it is and they're likely to try and get them. And I'd agree. But I think the point that I'm trying to get here about me still not trusting Ozpin is, in the past, he was a good man. In contrast to present day, he lies to everyone, trusts no one, and built a world off of deceit. In the past, he was not comfortable with Salem's ideologies. One simple phrase. The hearts of men are easily swayed. In contrast to present day, Ozpin is the one who swayed mankind into his design. He realized Salem spoke the truth, that they are easy to be manipulated and guided. But what's the difference between Ozpin and Salem? Nothing. Ozpin does it for a good cause, so it's okay? You think Salem believed that her cause in the past was bad? Good and bad are subjective, and I'm more than certain Salem believed that what she was doing was for the good. Much like the gods before them, they are determining what is for the betterment of their world. They wanted to be treated as gods, and while that may have fallen through as they're simply fairy tales now, they sure do act like gods. And so, it's not the past Ozma that I see as misguided, in fact I see him as good as they come. But it's the current Ozpin who swayed the world on lies and deceit and who sways the heart of man to fight and die for an unknown cause. The man who acts like a god but asks to be treated like a man. Humanity can never be whole when the ideologies they were founded upon are hidden or taken from them. Knowledge, choice, creation, and destruction are what makes humanity, humanity. Ozpin, by hiding what is really happening, why they are fighting, removes both knowledge and choice from everyone. Humanity doesn't know what they are fighting and why they are fighting it. It's because of these lies that humanity will never be redeemed. It's only through knowledge of what is really happening and what their world once was as well as choice in choosing what they do with such information in which they can truly achieve harmony. And Ozpin, what he is doing halts actual progression and that's why this backstory changes nothing about my feelings towards him. It only strengthens it. He and Salem are the exact same. But then a question is, why does Salem want the relics? You see, in the past, I think she was all about leading and killing a lot of people. But what I think is happening now is not that Salem wants to wipe out all of humanity as we were led to believe. 
I personally think she wants to attain the relics because she wants to take another swing at the gods. She wants to kill them and get revenge. To summon them to destroy Remnant would be weird. The brothers who cursed her, she spited and then tried to kill. She's going to ask a favor of them. Doesn't seem likely. Ozpin doesn't want this because surely he thinks she'll lose and the world will be deemed irredeemable and everyone will die. But Salem from doing this has everything to gain and nothing to lose. It's the one thing she's never done. It's her own suicide mission. She has no attachments to anyone on their world and the one man who she did love became her mortal enemy. Plus, she welcomes death. This episode gave us her plot. She's tried to kill herself. She's noticed that these gods are fallible and she hopes to rid herself of their curse. So after all of this time, maybe she thinks she has a way to get revenge and break the curse. But if it fails, what's the worst thing that'll happen? She die? I think Salem wants to die. Not in the sense that she's depressed and sad, but it in its own right is a sense of freedom. The brothers said that once she learns the importance of life and death, then she shall die. And honestly, I don't know what that means. Before, it was being locked in her room, which she wanted freedom from. But now, I think death is the last form of freedom Salem could ask for. But she wants to kill the gods in the process. Jin herself, the all-knowing sexy genie said, you can't kill Salem. So by killing the gods, that'll not only break her curse, but free Ozma as well. And thus, no gods. And no magic shall exist in Remnant. That's what I think is going on with Salem in current day. Then there were the gods. I was shocked as to how childish and just dicks they were. I thought it was weird that apparently Salem was the first individual ever to approach the gods in hope that they return someone to life. And then, when denied, went to the other one. There always has to be a first person to do it, and I guess Salem was just that one. But they proceeded to be incredibly childish, first with the get out of my room fight, and then cursing Salem for seeking an alternative means to bring Ozma back. Then, couple hundred people try to kill them, snap of a finger, wipe out all of humanity. It's like you're upset people don't like you, you're taking your ball and going home. And even when the Light God was just talking to Ozma, he blamed the whole extinction of their species on his brother. They're kids, these brothers are. They got thin skin and can be manipulated surprisingly easy. And this whole concept of gather the relics and we shall come back to judge you to see if you're worthy. Fuck them worthy. Oh, I wish I could be graced with the presence of such divine power. Get out of here. You want to talk about the true villains of this series? It's these two right there. Wiped out the precursors of humanity because a handful of them tried to fight you. They should not want them back, which is why, as I was talking about, I think Salem just wants to kill them. Both of these gods are currently the biggest enemy that Remnant faces, which just kind of makes me want to see every single character team up and kill them. But that's wishful thinking. And if it were to happen, would be like 10 volumes from now. But my point still stands here. These gods are better off being forgotten, but more safely killed. I also want to bring up something about Ozma and Salem's relationship. Their whole relationship is one big deja vu we all know well and good as an audience. Ozma and Salem has played out the exact same way as Blake and Adam. Adam is Salem and Blake is Ozma. A once innocent and righteous individual fell in love, but over time their ideologies began to escalate. Their significant other stood next to them, cautiously uncertain if it were right. They became more extreme and instead of trying to pull them down and set them on the right path, they ran, scared in hopes that the problem they were running from would disappear into a faint memory. But instead of going away, the thing that they were running from came back with a vengeance. Once love, now hate, consuming the other's life, incapable of moving forward. We've been through this already, and technically neither one of these have a conclusion. I faulted Blake for doing it, and now I fault Ozma for doing the same thing. When Salem began to become consumed by the darkness, Ozma should have stayed and helped guide her out of it. But instead, he allowed her to become consumed by it. And now here we are. And to be honest, Ozma tried to leave in what I would say wasn't that extreme of a scenario. Yes, she's been killing people, spreading the word of their existence, but the thing that spooked Ozma so much were just words. That they needed to kill those who don't follow them. He couldn't have just right there and then just been like, hey, let's maybe not do that, maybe we could figure something else out. It was weird that that was the thing that determined that she couldn't be saved. I think she still loved him at that time, so Ozma leaving was the worst thing that could have been done. 
After everything that's happened, the battles he's fought from death to resurrection multiple times, through the near extinction of their species, the only two surviving humans brought back and reunited in different bodies, having birthed the only magic children, gone. The moment he tried to abandon her, everything they went through went away for nothing. That's the moment that changed history for Remnant. Things could have been altered had he tried to guide Salem differently, but he chose to run. I would place that as Ozma's single greatest mistake he ever made. But what about the kids? This is definitely a hot topic of debate because like I'm sure many of you noticed, the four kids all resemble the Maidens. This of course leads the large majority of the audience to debate, are these the Maidens? Simple answer is we don't know. By the looks of it, it appears as though they were killed in the fight between Ozma and Salem. Ozma was definitely killed and so if the girls did live, they were raised under the care of Salem. But I think more than likely, this was just used as imagery. The story as we know it, Ozma was an old man visited by four girls who he then bestowed his powers to. The reason I don't believe these girls were the maidens is because it would literally destroy lore as we know it. The story of the old man? Waste of time. I think if anything, it was meant to possibly show us that the reason he gave these four girls his powers is because they reminded him of his children. In giving these four maidens powers, that in a way is like he having his kids back. That's incredibly depressing if it is, but if these kids are the maidens then it harms more lore than it helps. Because if they are the maidens then why would their powers transfer? That's not how their magic works, it's a bloodline that gave them powers. So I do believe this was Ozma giving his powers to girls who reminded him of his children, and in transferring its powers, it's like he can never lose them. And honestly, that makes me like Ozma more, but we don't know if that is true and is the case. So, do I trust Ozpin? The answer still remains no. In weird but simple terms, I like Ozma, but I don't like Ozpin. I mean, just compare what we know about Ozma right now to what we know about Ozpin right now. The two seem like completely different characters, but I feel as though Oscar holds many of the same virtues and has a good heart much like Ozma once did in his earliest lifetime. But Ozpin, current day Ozpin, still lies and deceives and has not earned my trust and may never will. My god, there's probably like 500 other topics that I didn't talk about right now that I can't think of. But that was so much lore. I love it, I love this episode, it gave us some much needed answers and motives and a path for knowing what's to come. There's still many unanswered questions, like why did Salem's existence fade away? Surely Ozpin is not in control of what she does, so why did she go from wanting everyone to bow down to her, to being a nobody? There's still hundreds of unanswered questions that must fill in blanks. But this is a standout episode of the season and the entire series. Things like the reason the moon's broken weren't that good. It gave us an answer, which is all I could ask for, but the audience definitely made it a much bigger deal than the show. So many theories were made and broken this episode. Many of the classics, Summer Rose being Salem, anything to do with the moon. Like this episode wiped out the classic theories. So I hope we get more episodes like this. I love backstories. I love seeing a definitive chronology being formed. Volume 6 is at 3 for 3 for me. All episodes great killing it. So many theories and ideas coming out, can't wait for the next episode.